United States Senator Cynthia Loomis is a member of the Senate Banking Committee. With the U.S. economy struggling to get its footing, we had a chance to speak with the senator. Here's a look. Senator Cynthia Loomis, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, Steve. Thanks for having me. Senator, the Biden administration is pushing back on, uh, despite historical indicators saying that we are likely in a recession, um, that we're not. Uh, what's to make of that? Well, if you look at the fact that we know that our economy is contracting, we know that inflation is at a 40-year high. We see people not being able to afford houses, not being able to afford gasoline and diesel. Um, it, you only have to look around to see that we're heading in this direction. And yet the Biden administration has its head in the sand. It will do nothing to prevent this impending recession. Now add to that the fact that we are now over 100% of GDP uh, in trouble. And any time a nation gets over 100% of GDP in trouble, uh, that nation uh, is going to suffer. So we're seeing all of these come together at the same time. Uh, and uh, it's, they can't deny without people questioning their logic that we are heading for a recession. So switching gears a little bit, I want to ask you about uh, there's rumblings that the Biden administration is considering rolling back the Trump era China tariffs um, to try to ease inflation. Do you think that the ends would justify the means? I do not. Uh, I think that we have to continually uh, monitor and respond to China's advancing aggressions. Uh, they are tending to be slow. They have a long time frame to work with and they tend to move slowly. But now that they see the United States uh, becoming subservient, backing off, not being strong, compromising its own economy, uh, they're going to fill that gap. They're doing it in uh, Southeast Asia in the China Sea. They're doing it in Africa by building airports and roads. Uh, they are buying farmland in the United States, in Florida, in mass. It's happening so quickly now that they're escalating their presence everywhere. Uh, and as we know, 90% of the semiconductor chips that are so important in this country are produced in Taiwan, but 0% of the highly technical chips we need are produced produced in the United States. We are cutting off our nose despite our face and we're letting China fill the gap. So I think this is the wrong time to look at the tariff issue. Passing sweeping legislative group of bipartisan senators vowing to boost U.S. chip production to outcompete China. But some lawmakers say there are critical errors in the bill that could subject the U.S. to CCP espionage. Entity's Iris Tao brings us more. The yeas are 64, the nays are 33, and the motion to concur with an amendment is agreed to. With broad bipartisan support, the Senate on Wednesday finally greenlighting a long-awaited semiconductor bill. But this is one of the most significant long-term thinking bills we've passed in a very long time. Now known as the Chips and Science Act, the $52 billion bill aims to address a chip shortage in the U.S. and reduce reliance on China. This is a bad day for President Xi and the Chinese Communist Party. And a group of bipartisan senators calling today's move a big step toward recognizing CCP threats. The slumbering giant that is America has finally awakened to the challenge that we face from the People's Republic of China, their aggressive posture in the region, and the potential they would have of cutting off our access to advanced semiconductors. But others say the bill is still too weak on China. In a Wednesday statement, Republican Senator Marco Rubio calls out Senate Democrats for blocking his amendments seeking to counter Beijing's espionage and intellectual theft. He writes, quote, no one should be surprised when we hear stories of Beijing stealing U.S. technology funded by this bill or companies producing more chips in China, even as they receive money from the taxpayers. 
And Senator Maria Kentwell responds by telling NTD that this bill focuses on innovation while other actions are still being discussed. So we're very confident in this, very, in this first step. Uh, the conference could include other language. And after passing in the Senate, the legislation is now moving to the House, where Speaker Nancy Pelosi has said it does have the support for passing. And other key lawmakers have also said they could send the bill to Biden's desk by the end of this week. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Iris Tao, NTD News. Senate Judiciary Committee Ranking Member Chuck Grassley led 23 Republican colleagues in introducing legislation to clarify and strengthen violent crime laws. These laws are related to homicide, bank robbery, carjacking, kidnapping, and other offenses. The purpose is to deter criminal activity by ensuring that crimes do not go unpunished and to provide tools to law enforcement officers. Progressive, pro-criminal prosecutors fuel this spike in violent crime by letting dangerous criminals go unpunished and in some cases even uncharged. As many communities across the country experience a spike in crime, the GOP hopes that their bill will help to reverse this trend. So far, the bill does not have any Democratic co-sponsors. The U.S. military is getting ready to step up support if House Speaker Nancy Pelosi travels to Taiwan. The Pentagon says that an attack on Pelosi by the Chinese regime is not likely. However, the U.S. military in the region will still provide additional protection for her travel. A trip to Taiwan by Pelosi is still uncertain, but if she does go, she will be the highest ranking elected U.S. official in 25 years to travel to the island. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is supporting Pelosi's Taiwan visit. The Chinese regime, on the other hand, threatened the U.S. with a forceful response if Speaker Pelosi travels to Taiwan. McConnell said Pelosi not going would be handing a victory to the Communist Party. China sees Taiwan as a territory of mainland China, despite Taiwan never having been ruled by the communist regime. Democratic Congressman Hank Johnson on Tuesday introduced a bill to place term limits on Supreme Court justices. Democratic representatives Jerry Nadler, Sheila Jackson Lee and Ro Khanna are among the co-sponsors. Under the proposal, a new justice would take the bench every two years and would spend 18 years in active service. This would allow each president two appointees per term. In a press release, Johnson called the measure an effort to restore legitimacy and independence to the Supreme Court. Nadler said he wanted to shift the balance of power away from the conservative majority. Six of the current justices were appointed by Republican presidents and three appointed by Democrats. The amount of Supreme Court justices has been fixed at nine since 1869. Republicans have accused the Democrats of being sore losers for attempting to change the rules when they are not in their favor. A statue of Amelia Earhart was in the U.S. Capitol. Born in Kansas, Earhart was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. She pioneered long-distance air travel and was also a best-selling author documenting her flying adventures through books. For the barrier she broke, the Congress awarded her the Distinguished Flying Cross, the first woman in American history to receive this prestigious honor. 85 years after she vanished, Amelia Earhart still inspires us. The statue of Earhart was chosen for the National Statuary Hall collection by the state of Kansas. The sculpture took seven years to create. Artists George and Mark Lundeen said that they used the many photos of Amelia Earhart that still remain.